The Hedgeless Horseman here, it's August 3rd, 2022. Uh, this will be my first video in a while. I've been on vacation and uh, been enjoying life during these hot summer months. Uh, not m too much to say. I mean, uh, obviously I noticed the juniors have been doing great uh, last seven, eight, nine days or so. Maybe a bit more than that actually. Uh, is this a bottom uh, or is the bottom in? I have no idea. I don't really care. My Again, my uh, my job is not to guess when the bottom is in. My, uh, my job is to buy as low as I can, as cheap as possible, uh, with the best possible risk reward. And then wait uh, a year or two, uh, at least until we get into a, you know environment of sentiment highs. Uh, and uh, I would just like to point out the fact that, I mean, the, I think my portfolio, when I checked, had its best one week action in quite some time. I think it's up like, or maybe two weeks. I, th I think it's up around 30% or so uh, of the lows. Um, and I was, would just like to point out, uh, I did nothing over that period. I did not really watch the market or anything like that. Follow the news. What is Fed going to do? What is Fed not going to do? I see people all the time trying to guess. It's like the the, the topic of the day is like, okay, what's uh, what's Fed going to do? When are they going to pivot? That That's what everybody seems to be, you know, caring about. And then we obviously have the Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan situation, we obviously have Ukraine, we have, you know, the two deteriorating uh, fundamentals for the US economy and for Europe, uh, gas and energy prices, you know, up uh, several hundred percent. And it looks like, I mean, we're going to have some kind of, well, the, the US is already in a recession, uh, but, but I think it's like, I, I think things might get worse. Uh, again, it's like gold and silver, Wh where else would you want to be really? Uh, obviously physical gold and silver is like the backbone of everything. I mean, that's the hedge to my gold and silver and, and, uh, you know, other metals portfolio. That's the, the physical gold and silver is unlike anything else because, uh, you, miners, etc. They're, they're, they're still risk assets. Obviously they can go uh, bankrupt and they can swing wild in price, but you'll never see, you know, gold down 50% in a day or anything like that. Um. So as long as one has that taken care of, I don't see a, any other sector where I would rather be than in the uh, derivatives of gold and silver, uh, the mining stocks. Not only are they incredibly cheap right now, uh, I think the fundamentals for gold, silver and a lot of metals are incredibly good as well. Uh, but anyway, back to the point. So, okay. I, I didn't focus at all on the markets, uh, didn't really pay much attention to price of gold or silver or anything. So why, you know, when you have the best week or two in quite some time, uh, obviously that kind of points to the simplicity of my strategy. I didn't do anything for to have the best uh, two weeks in a long time. I literally did the uh, least amount of things in terms of markets uh, ever, not ever, but in a long time. I didn't trade anything, but it just went up. And I think it was on, was it Friday perhaps, or actually was it yesterday? Uh, recently at least, I, I made a tweet like, okay, gold and silver actually ended down. I don't know if it was Tuesday, uh, yesterday, or if it was Friday. Who cares? Anyway, metal the, the paper prices of metals, gold and silver, ended down. But there were still a bunch of juniors that were up like 10, 15, 20%. So, okay, even if you, I, you know, <laughs> uh, to the point, even if you were 100% sure and ended up looking correct, that yes, I think gold and silver prices are going to go down today. They did. Still, you missed out on, you know, 10, 15, 18% uh, 
runs in some juniors and if that if that was the bottom now uh, some of them retraced a bit today but if that would have been the bottom let's say a 15 20 percent move off the bottom that that has if you buy in 20 percent later i mean you're probably these are still cheap levels so you're gonna make money but if you need to chase after they go up to 20 30 percent i mean a lot of juniors are actually up like i don't know 30 50 i mean even no is up 50 percent or something from the bottom i mean in the grand scheme of things that's a big difference uh if you buy it at you know one dollar or 1.5 dollar if it goes to six dollars or whatever that has huge implications uh and again it's like okay so why did i have nice you know paper profit let's say i mean the work was already done so th that's why i uh, put up these questions here when is the money made really people sit and watch it's like okay if if the stock goes up if my uh, if i have some paper profits uh, that's when actually the the their strategy is paying off or whatever i mean that's when the winning happens i mean sure but that's just a day or whatever i mean i set myself up and I have been setting myself up to reap future rewards. But you don't sow in the same period that you harvest, obviously. If I would have sold out the lows or whatever, I would not be along for the ride. So, I mean, winning is not something that happens. That, okay, a, a stock goes up 30%. If you were in that stock, but you had no clue really why you were in that stock congratulations you just earned 30 percent and you might sell it or not but let's say you sell it you bank 30 percent it runs 200 percent higher in the next six months uh so it doesn't look like you you know uh did a good good sale let's say but but the point is that i mean results are one thing it, it's the strategy can you repeat the strategy buying low like I have been and trying to get people to not sell low. I mean, I find it kind of, I don't know, poetic almost that when I don't, when I don't put up a video for, uh, uh, you know, a, a week or so, that's when it's also not, uh, you know, let's say needed the least because juniors were actually doing well. And obviously everybody has an easier time holding something that's actually getting pricier when the, when the, risk reward let's say is getting worse people have no problem holding or buying but when they go down that's when i feel i need to point out the fact that this is when you sow the future returns uh, the better future returns you're gonna have the cheaper you have to buy so i mean it played out per perfectly from that perspective because i i haven't felt the need to really uh well hold anyone's hands let's say because juniors are up like 30 40 50 60 percent off the lows but it, so anyway if 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 you were along for the lows if the if the low is in and you were actually long and bought uh during that uh the recent decline i mean good on you i mean that's not easy to do most people will never do that and of course we have the you know the the uh I wouldn't say old saying, but you know, something that's down 50% needs to go up 100% uh, to get even. Yes, that's true, of course. But the thing is, if you buy more and more, which again is the, super hard to do for most people, if you buy more and more, some uh, uh, the lower something goes. You don't need 100% to get back to even. If, if you needed 100%, if you bought in here, and you ended up here. Yes, you would need like 100% to get back to even. But if you bought all the way down here and bought increasingly so the more slaughtered it was. I mean, this period, this was, uh, you know, several months where you could have bought, bought the low. Let's say you increased your total holdings by like 20% or whatever. I haven't done the math, but you don't need 100% to get back to even in that case. Uh take uh, i mean juniors this is uh, you know two of the proxies i use strategic metals and bear creek mining i mean the, yes they're they're up <laughs> but <laughs> i mean I, I already you know get questions from some people like are, are you selling or it's like you know people are nervous ah, i'm you know i'm 
we're off 30 40 percent off the bottom what should i do i mean again it's like market timing i don't give a shit about this little move here i, I i'm waiting for us to reach this that's how you you make it easy on yourself in my opinion otherwise what you're saying let's say if you're scared now what to do it's like yeah it's, it's had a pop of like ridiculous lows and you don't know what to do i mean are we even close to this level otherwise you're gonna be scared shitless all the way up and like yeah it goes up and then it goes maybe it goes down tomorrow or it goes down for three weeks and you're like <gasps> okay a f false uh, uh, breakout or false rally like this move uh, move here i mean i thought this this looked to be the bottom impulse move bear creek mining up 100 percent that was false okay so again if you try to like wait and time i'm waiting for the coast to be clear maybe you buy here and then you're 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 at a loss so you sell out again and then you buy here for example and maybe it goes down and you sell at a loss again and who knows i mean how many times can you afford to like buy here and then sell 30 percent lower buy here and maybe f sell 30 percent lower that's that stacks up in a hurry but if you're again if you're just a value investor long-term value investor you would obviously just be licking your chops like oh jesus i mean if i buy if i add five percent to my portfolio at this level that's going to supercharge my returns even if i started buying here and i bought f uh, added five percent here you don't need it to go back here before you're in the clear already so I mean I, I'm I'm investing as much as I can all the time every every week basically or every month at least I'm buying more and more so I'm continuously lower the longer these these downtrends persist the more shares I can buy for less dollars and obviously it's like I don't think again this is with deposits etc I'm not too far off from all time high in my total portfolio and we're still down here why because i typically again uh, try to go for alpha growth cases and you've probably seen western alaska that's been on a tear and it's like several hundred percent higher so i mean if if western alaska doubles from here and if i hadn't take, taken any profits let's say on that on the way uh, from here up you know 100 percent more that would almost uh, that position alone would be pretty much as uh, worth as much as my entire portfolio was like two years ago or something that's from one stock one growth stock so i mean I compare that to again like bear creek mining have then have they created a lot of value over the recent time no have they created a lot of value over the last year or two no i don't think so but if you ha have, you know, the great bears or whatever, and just you're just patient, I, I've said this before, it's like people are like now they're focused on, you know, the, the, the what's the dollar going to do, do? When is the top in for the dollar? What's the Fed going to do? The Fed speaker said this. Uh, is the Fed going to pivot? And I mean, these questions and these discussions, they go on in like precious metal focused podcasts as well. And I'm just sitting there. It's like, they, I don't have a clue what Fed is going to do. I don't care what the Fed is going to do. It's like, I only focus on the companies. So, I mean, if you have, you're trying to guess what, what Fed is going to do and if they're going to pivot and how the market is going to uh, react to that and what's going to happen with the dollar and how juniors are going to react to that. I mean, we've seen recently, even though silver and gold were down, some juniors put in massive rallies. So it's obvious that you're get, I mean, if you follow everything, you're guessing on a bunch of stuff that you possibly can't know. I mean, there's what a million, I mean, many million of people trying to guess what Fed is going to do. Where's the alpha in that? I don't see it. It's like, yeah, I'm going to outsmart ev every single soul, basically. And then I have to be right that the, the things I buy actually are going to do what I think they do in case I'm right. I mean, the that's a fool's game in my opinion so it's like i i don't i don't get it it's like people uh you know you listen to people that have been investing in this space a lot longer than me and i, I s still see them like focusing on a bunch of in my opinion irrelevant noise 
if you get the company right, if, if a company increases the value for uh, with two hundred by two hundred percent over the next one or two years, I mean, if, if gold does great and sentiment is high, you're gonna make a boatload of money. If if gold is down and sentiment is poor, maybe you're gonna be even or whatever. But it's like it's not the worst thing in the world to have like one or two years even of of let's say downtrending action because you can't know the. You, you don't have a crystal ball anyway. You can just set yourself up, in my opinion, the best strategy is just to set yourself up for the best possible risk reward. So if, if you focus on the companies and the companies perform, you know, along the your base case, maybe you'll be down or, or even or whatever. But when it turns, like it always will, you're going to make a boatload of money. And since nobody can know when it's going to turn or not, so it's like a fool's errand to be... Like every every other person basically trying to pick the bottoms and pick the tops, etc. And and they never can. I mean, that's why 95% lose. They try to guess a bunch of stuff that's just noise. It's like, why on earth would I sell? Let's say you found one of the best case growth cases in miners you, you found. It's like, oh, this junior could like, you know, quadruple the value they have in the next field season or a year. Why on earth would I sell that, given that, I mean, uh, assuming, yes, it's cheap, so I mean, it's not pricing in anywhere close to a quadrupling in value. Why on earth would I sell that because I have a hunch of what the dollar's going to do? Oh, I'm scared the dollar's going to go up 5% and gold is going to go down 10%. So I'm going to sell this stock, I think, will quadruple its value, intrinsic value, over the next year or so. And I'm not paying anywhere close to that. How on earth does that make sense? Especially since we've already seen over the last year, year and a half, that gold and silver, especially gold, hasn't even done poorly and still the miners have. So again, even if you guessed correct on that gold would be strong, you would be, uh, your results would be poor in miners. So like how much evidence do you need to realize that Hey, I think I'm putting a lot of focus on a bunch of stuff that really does not matter. Because even in some cases that I get it right, the results can be completely different. Whereas again, if you focus on the companies, which it seems to be a rarity these days, every, literally everyone is a trader, everyone is a momentum trader, everybody's focusing on a bunch of, in my opinion, worthless stuff. That's why I think this market is so easy. Because to me, this is like such a no-brainer, I cannot even describe it. Everything is dirt cheap. Who cares what the gold, uh, where the dollar is headed? Who cares what gold and silver are headed? No, no downtrend lasts forever, unless the, it's the end of civilization, and then it doesn't matter. So it's like, this is the only stuff I think you really need to focus on. It's like, everything is cheap right now. Can you find high quality, high growth companies that are also cheap? And could be worth two, three hundred percent more in the next two years. If you can, pretty obvious buys to me. Not what Fed is going to do. The Fed can't print more supply anyway. And the physical demand is actually going up. So it's like the tail the tailwinds for physical gold and I mean gold overall uh, are increasingly favorable. So why on earth am I going to focus on a bunch of crap? Uh, anyway, it's like, like a long rant. But I, I, I hope, I, I think some people are trying to see things my way. It's like... I, I I think people can get paranoid by the fact that, you know, because everybody else is focusing on like 50 different factors or whatever. Everybody comments on, oh, I think rates are going to go wherever. So everybody thinks that's what everyone should focus on because everybody focuses on that. I think that's absolute bullshit. I mean, most people on, there's a bunch of people on Twitter that are very smart, say very smart things. I don't think they make a lot of money in the markets. That, that's, that's what I think. So it's like, yes, you can listen to all the noise and everybody who wants to sound smart. And I mean, I enjoy a puzzle as much as anyone else. So, I mean, it's, 
I find the hunt for finding something undervalued. That's the most fun part. So I can I guess, I mean, I can understand that people who like try to front run macro, whatever. It's like, what is Putin going to do? What is China going to do? What is yada yada going to do? I mean, that's intellectually stimulating. But if you're an investor, you're not after to be intellectually stimulated. That's not the main goal, at least. It's to make money. And the, the market is, especially the junior sector, I mean, it's, it's just a d dumb market with a lot of uh, emotions and sentiment. I mean, it's my, I don't think my investing strategy is rocket science. I mean, it's almost, I mean, I've, I've made it as simple as I possibly can. Have a longer time horizon than the market buy when it's undervalued. That's that's it. There's no Fed hikes. There's no uh, real rates. There's no uh, Fed pivots. There's no price of gold, price of silver. I mean, you should be excited about the company. Then you're on to something. If you're excited about the company, if gold goes to 3000, you probably don't have a case or not a good case at least. So it's like, like I said before, have the conviction like it's a bull market uh, that it's going to turn any day. Uh, because I mean, the longer something goes on, the I mean, by definition, we get closer to the bottom. So I mean, there's a higher probability that this is the bottom than this, by definition, because no trend lasts uh, lasts forever. Uh, so uh, I've done a tweet recently where uh, uh, try to be a bit funny. It's like uh, the person who shouts the bottom is in 100 days in a row will be believed less every time he, for any, every additional time he shouts that the bottom is in you know the boy who cried wolf a hundred times but the funny thing is that he should be believed more and more by definition because if something is not if something is finite a trend is finite every day the trend persists is by definition one day closer to the change of the trend so it's like, you know, Peter Schiff, I mean, anyone, uh, I mean, he, he gets ridiculed for shouting, you know, everything is going to collapse, etc. And people say, ah, he's been saying that for, you know, since, I don't know, 2011 or whatever. Uh, and he, he he's going to be believed less and less and less, even though he, by definition, is getting closer and closer to being right. I mean, when you think about it, it's pretty obvious. Anyway, let's look at some news. No resources, uh, drilling commences on Purdy's North Gold and Nickel Copper targets. I haven't really dug into this. I mean, there's so many targets. Uh, obviously, Novo is not uh, expensive right now. 134 million. I don't remember how much cash we have. We have that as well. But if the Sprott finance, if the Sprott deal closes this month, that's going to bring in like 50 million or something. So, I mean, that then it will really be very very cheap given that they have a mill and doing a feasibility study etc uh, so i mean is is anything really pressed in for some conventional drilling success i mean I, um, carlo where's the slide uh, here we have carlo castle artemis here we have the uh, uh, azor uh, minerals or whatever they're called nickel copper uh, discovery i think they had a hundred million uh, market cap not too long ago uh, so i mean <laughs> we're Nova's ground here is between two uh, nickel discoveries yeah is there some chance of discovery yeah i would think so given that nature doesn't care about claim borders and then there's a bunch of other stuff so it's like anything can hit here and if if something just gets valued it's like a hundred hundred million dollar value or whatever i mean that's gonna then no would be cheap just based on one discovery across their you know entire land package and we have a meal etc etc so it's like it's no cheap yeah i think it's pretty i mean it's dirt cheap uh, but it's going to take a lot for sentiment to turn around obviously because no has got under uh, gone through so many changes let's say uh and my, uh, I mean, personally, my predictions about what was going to happen in Novo, I mean, I, I don't think I've been ended up looking more wrong on a stock uh, than than Novo. Uh, but I think it's been cheap for forever almost. Uh, but now everything is cheap. So it's like, that's not a huge surprise. Uh, 
but I don't think that, for example, conglomerate story etc. is over uh, because they ha still have a bunch of uh, claims, obviously. And uh, I mean, we'll have to wait and see how war sorting goes, etc. But it, but it's a much, let's say, longer term story. But it, it's cheap, and they have a lot of prime ground, and like uh, Jim Bowie here. In the Michael Spreadwell presentation, Nova plans a 36,000 meter air core drilling program at Beecher, hoping to hit another Hemi. So that's like, I mean, they're gonna carpet bomb the crap out of uh, the intrusion targets, uh, which Hemi reached, uh, I don't know, $2 billion market cap on it. So, I mean, if they hit something like that, starting from this valuation, you account for the cash, mill, every other asset, obviously. I, I really like the risk reward. I mean, not, nothing in terms of success is priced in. So, I mean, if they would hit half a Hemi, etc., uh, that would be a company maker as well. Uh, we have some news from Newfound Gold. Keats North, com uh, the title was Syst Systematic Drilling Outlines New High Grade Mineralized Vein Sets Over 630 Meter Strike, connecting Keats and f uh, 515 zones, 515 zones. So, this is a uh, 515 zone this is the you know uh, ma Keats main he here <clears throat> so it appears that there's a bunch of veins that actually uh, joins up and, and crosses the, the Keats veins here that's kind of interesting I mean uh, that's been my uh, notion uh, for months that the more newfound gold drills the, the more they are hitting so obviously it's a very very fertile area they are in and they have like, I don't know, 14 rigs or whatever. Uh, obviously, it's tricky with these veins. Uh, they are nuggety, etc. I mean, you can have bonanza, uh, bonanza results, etc. But they are, they are they are nuggety and concentrated. So the footprint is not huge. You can see the scale bar here. But there can be a lot of gold. So, I mean, you know, three, four millions of million dollars of this stuff, given that it's close to surface. I mean, we know what Foster Wheel was worth. Uh, so, uh, you know, yeah, I think this is a probable growth story. It's just going to grow and grow and grow and price hasn't really, I think actually price is probably waiting. I mean, the share, share price hasn't moved much. I, I think it's actually waiting to see what happens with the Sprott uh, deal. So, so I, I can see a bounce uh, happening after that. So I, I think the market is kind of holding its breath, etc. let's say. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is just a probable growth story. Uh, it's like a year from now, they will have even more high grade gold. So it's not, it's not, again, it's not rocket science and valuation has come down. So, I mean, it, I mean, it's not the fastest grower, uh, but I mean, it doesn't require too much more, I think, to ha make it one of the, you know, let's say prime takeover targets or or you know maybe even they could put it into production themselves i mean the footprint again is not huge and this is quite near surface so if they have like i don't know two million ounces of very high grade gold near surface that that could probably be worth quite a bit uh, and and you know there's a lot more to it and obviously this is just a snapshot of the overall land package they have sk mining uh the beast Discovers more VMS targets and commences drilling at Scarlet Ridge. I mean, th this is literally the story that just keeps on giving. I mean, every news release, pretty much, the blue sky just increases and increases. I mean, that's what you get when you have a guy like John De Decker, who's like, he, he found caves on Mars. I think it was, the, it was Mars or the moon. Uh, uh, so I think he can find VMS deposits, especially if they're outcropping its surface. <laughs> Uh, at Scarlet Ridge. I mean, uh, I recommend you, uh, well, I, I recommend uh, watching the recent videos with him. I mean, he's, he's obviously super excited. They, they can see the, I mean, hundreds of meters of outcropping VMS and they're gonna put a, is that in this slide? Yeah, I think they're gonna put a, like 800 meter holes or something right, right through the guts of uh, this feeder zone here. And they, they believe, I mean, they're finding evidence that this might be a string of pearls when, you know, multiple feeders, etc., stacked horizons uh, up to eight kilometers. And that's Scarlet Ridge up here. 
And then you have the TVGF, which, which is like, I think, confirmed around five kilometers at least. And I believe, uh, I mean, it's open-ended, so like six. I mean, so when you think about it, they might have like, you know, 13 kilometers of strike to drill just from Scarlet Ridge and TVGF alone. How many years could that last in terms of, you know, probable growth? I, I, I Maybe I shouldn't say probable growth with everything, but it's like, that's a runway that could last. They, SK, if you just sat put in SK, I, I would expect that to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow for years. So regardless of what gold, silver, what the hell other factor one wants to throw in there, uh, I think the value of SK is just going to keep increasing. And they have not yet hit like the SK Creek type bonanza stuff. But you know how good they've drilled the TVGF and that, that, were, that were mostly feeder zones. And like he said in a recent interview, the Decker, he said that many of the large VMS camps in Canada is actually built around the replacement uh, horizons. So it's not the exhalative zone where they, you know, metals get spewed up on the seafloor. It's actually, you know, they spread up uh, in the crust under the <coughs> seafloor. And I, I assume that's a bit more predictable than, you know, you have a hose at the uh, seafloor spewing out metals which you know a lot can happen obviously on the seafloor so in my book that's a real good thing because that means that uh, even though it's like yeah to find another sk creek uh, would obviously be a you know true company maker i mean multi-billion dollar value the the skin resources stuff that they have left is worth uh, i think on paper on 1.6 billion or something so I, I think we're going to reach at least a Skina type resource uh, at TVGF alone. But if we hit some exhalative stuff or, uh, you know, replacement stuff or, or uh, nice, thick, you know, feeder zones or whatever. I mean, there, there's so many upside surprises that could happen in SK mining, in my opinion. And again, I love long runways because, okay, if blue sky is that... 15 kilometers of strike is going to be mineralized you know at least you know uh, let's say a, a good part of it to be economically mineralized if that misses by 50 percent or more that would still be a company maker because sk creek is like one to 1.5 kilometers long that includes skinas resource which is valued at 1.6 or something so obviously if you have up to, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 kilometers of strike that we know of now, potential, you can miss blue sky by a mile and, and SK could still be a multi-bagger. I, I love those cases. I don't, I don't, I want no-brainers. I don't want precision. I don't want to be, need to be 100% correct that, okay, if blue sky, exact blue sky materializes, then you have a company maker. No, I want the blue sky to be absolutely enormous, the run runway for growth to be absolutely enormous, that they have stuff uh, with probable growth that could last for years, so I can sit on my ass for one, two, three, four years. Who knows? And uh, if I check back in one year, they will have, let's say, doubled or... or uh, triple the value and if i check back in two years maybe sixfold you know that kind of stuff so even if the se if sentiment is poor at that point in time even if gold and silver is down if they would have increased the intrinsic value by like 600 percent of course the the share i'm probably going to be sitting at a nice profit and then at the same time within two years if sentiment gets better so within two years if this sentiment indicator down here goes up to here or here or whatever then you then you can multiply that value by again if it's priced at 20 dollars per ounce now maybe it's going to be 80 dollars so let's say you know four times just from sentiment alone pricing in the gold ounces let's say you add three four five percent hundred percent in ounces so, so that's four times you know three, four, five, or whatever. That's how you get multi-baggers. But again, you, you, if, if you're not willing to hold a stock for like one, two years, you're never gonna get a 10-bagger. No way. That, that's why it's like, yes, I, I picked the companies that I think it's like in two years, I think they're gonna be worth a lot more. And within two years, I think sentiment is gonna be way higher than it is now. 
So I expect to make a lot of money simply by waiting. Simply by waiting. I can go on a vacation. It's like, it's the case intact. Yeah, what's going to kill the case for SK Creek or SK Mining? Are they going to miss on everything uh, going forward, even though they hit like, you know, semi-blind just from Skytem alone? No, obviously John the Decker has shown that him and his team, it's like, they very much know what they're doing and he's smart as hell. So, I mean, my book, yeah, I, I'm betting on the Decker that he's going to, you know, be the magic man, basically. So give this guy cash and time and to figure out stuff and then let him drill wherever he wants. I think he's going to sort this out good and proper. Uh, Goliath adds a fifth drill rig on the Shorebet Discovery. Uh, as 100% of all holes intersect mineralization. Again, the gift that keeps on giving. Probable growth. I've said this before. I mean, what's more probable growth than hitting in 100% of your holes? And they are using five drill rigs now. So if you had to bet, do you think... Uh, before this season is over, fast forward six months, do I think that Goliath resources might have increased the intrinsic value yeah unless they start hit missing in 100 percent of holes and i don't think even what they've been hitting so far is like priced in one second oh, street sweeper uh yeah and um, again it's like the step out holes are enormous they hit something here they hit something here uh this is what my base case was built around like uh, this is why i love goliath i think this will be a multi-million ounce deposit it's going to be worth several hundred million and then they've hit up a new goal they hit that pad j as well that's like two kilometers from the real deal where they hit and they, they talk about it in the news releases like uh, and quinton said that especially this looks i think this looks more like this than this looks like this. So this might be a porphyry style something. It's like, yeah, it might be a big fat bonus, but that, that's not, I mean, Blue Sky and, and the, in my opinion, expected value of Goliath is already so way above uh, where it's priced right now. So this is like absolutely free upside. <laughs> Let's just say it like that. Uh, yeah. In my opinion, no brainer case. Haven't have yet to see a junior that has 100% hit rate. Maybe outside uh, Eloro, uh, of course. Uh, but I mean, thick intercepts. Uh, yeah, five ri five rigs. I mean, they they even say the 2022 drill campaign will include resource level infill drilling. So it's like I, I don't know how much they can you know pr how much they can prove up. Uh, in terms of you know having the uh, tightness of the drill holes in order I mean I don't think they can infer all of this but m maybe part of it so maybe it's like yeah they infer I don't know one one and a half million ounces of high grade and it's obvious that they hit a bunch of other places so it's like yeah we know they probably have 1.5 million ounces and they probably have I don't know maybe three four or five million ounces uh, is is that is uh, Goliath expensive in light of that? No, I don't think so. High grade discovery underground, pretty thick, uh, uh, good widths. Uh, what we've seen so far, Melody looks excellent. Uh, close to Dolly Warden, etc. No, I mean th this could probably w be worth several hundred millions or or a billion uh, or more. Nevada King is gonna drill uh, like crazy uh, to date an initial. In its initial 2022 program, Nevada King has completed 35 reverse circulation uh, holes totaling uh, almost 2,000 meters. Uh, yeah, th they're just going to drill this up. And recently they showed that the metallurgy actually looks really good, especially on the oxides, if I remember correctly. Uh, so again, <laughs> I, mean, I think this is a probable, probable uh, growth story. I mean, I is it for from... Let's say from Atlanta, the Atlanta gold mine uh, alone, is this the, like the highest grower from this project? No, I don't think so. I mean, if they would hit at Iron Point or some other places, every, uh, you know, I mean, if they hit at Iron Point, for example, I mean, uh, that's a behemoth target. So, every, uh, I mean, it would, the case would change overnight. But they have a massive portfolio. Uh, 
uh, they already have the Atlanta gold mine with probable growth here. So I think this is one of the more op optionality plays in terms of, yes, they have a lot of uh, a very a huge amount of ground in the core test trend. That could be worth a lot uh, because gold is rare. Prime ground is uh, rarer still, obviously, especially in t a tier one jurisdiction like Nevada. Uh, so this is one of the more safe bets and we know that Colin Cattell CEO he recently put in around I think 5 million extra uh, with no warrants etc so huge insider ownership huge insider support they brought in, in people from Barrick etc so it's like if I lose money on Nevada King I would be incredibly surprised especially if I hold it for like two years uh, yeah uh, pretty in my opinion very very good risk reward especially uh, with the folks on margin of safety and you get growth and potentially uh, quantum leap growth uh, if again iron point hits snowland gold uh, i mean this this is why i love this market uh, they put up they put out this news release today and uh, uh, the the stock uh, I, um, it might have popped uh, it popped for a while actually. I'm just gonna check. Yeah, so it popped right off the gate. This was obviously, I mean, I, I don't know what people actually, what kind of news release pay people read. Because the, it didn't take too long and it sold off. I mean, this is one of my favorite cases and I just started buying. Uh, uh, when I saw it, when I saw it dip, it's like such an obviously positive news release, and it gets sold. It's like, what more can I ask for? <laughs> uh, I mean, central corridor of Wayne density up to 300 meter wide, 600 meter long, open, and 430 meter deep, open. So I mean, do some quick calculations on that. Where, where's that 600? Uh, is that this? Yeah. Okay. If, 430 meters uh, deep, 600 strike, 300 meters wide. If you have 1.5 grams per ton, I mean, we know that these holes hit like uh, 1.25 to some. I mean, you could put it at one as well, but like if it's 1.5 and that's just from, well, just, I mean, that's like, uh, yeah, around this cor corridor here or whatever. I mean, I think some of these souls are for sure going to run, run higher than one gram uh, probably over 1.5 as well uh, but that then you get 10 million ounces that's a company maker i'm gonna i'm, I'm doing a pretty big uh, article on snowland where i explain it a bit more but uh, other stuff in the news release uh, uh, the overall footprint is like uh, uh, there it's up to 800 meters by 600 meters uh, that's uh, counting because the other w holes even though they didn't all hit uh, vi had visible gold they still had you can see the vein density here and somebody posted a piece done by I think the intrusion uh, expert who's in actually Snowline who, who concluded that vein density seems to be the especially or at least for Fort Knox and uh, I think Gub Dublin Gulch vein density was the you know best predictor of, of uh, grade uh, and I don't remember the vein densities here but I think you can see that it's like orange to yeah 5 to 10 and sub 5 so, some act some had a lot of visible gold though but if you just look at vein densities these return like what is it? Is that 0.77 grams? Maybe. Uh, anyway, 168.7 meters at 1.25 grams per ton in this bad boy here. Uh, so let's say maybe this is like 0.5. I don't know. 0.8. May maybe less. I don't know. But but these uh, higher vein densities, a bunch of uh, visible gold. I think whole 10. I think they mentioned that, or is that 120? Yeah, uh, hole 10, that's this one. 
120 instances of trace submillimeter scale visible gold uh, observed along the length of the 404 meter hole. 120 instances of visible gold. Is that going to run a gram? I don't think so. Uh, obviously, I mean, if, if this footprint here runs like, I don't know, two grams per ton or who knows maybe three grams i mean you don't need too much of that in that case and obviously there's gold here here there's veins up here uh and now they also think that it, it appears that there's actually might be another intrusion right next to it so it's like you can see there's veins here Ve every hole, hole so far has hit veins and some have hit incredible amounts of visible gold and if you do some math on the, on, on, you know, uh, even if you assume it's like 0.8 over this whole thing, I mean, and it goes down to like 400 meters, that's way above 10 million ounces. And you have that. And what I didn't see too many people uh, comment on is the fact that, um, let's see here, you know, Gracie, the, the uh, big elephant in the room, let's say, which looks, you know, the footprint of gold, gold anomaly, uh, the gold in soil anomaly is absolutely huge, obviously. And it appeared because there was like bismuth and tellurium. So it appears that, yes, this is probably a big intrusion related system as well. And but they in the last interview I saw, I think, with Scott uh, or it, at least what was when he was talking with the Quinton, he said they had yet to find really sheeted vein arrays but lo and behold uh, 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 yeah aerial magnetic work and mapping have identified multiple structural corridors including a sheeted joint vein array in hornfeld sediment that parallels a dominant uh, mineralization orientation at the valley zone so it, it sounds like yes they're actually see they have found sheeted uh, vein arrays at Gracie. In that case, it's pretty much confirmed that at least some of this is indeed an intrusion related system. So, in that case, like how much gold would you need here? Maybe 10 million ounces. I mean, it's quite remote. So, I mean, this alone could easily host 10 million ounces. And that's not, you know, going, uh, that's down to let's say 400 meter, and that's not even accounting for the, uh, this whole thing. And it's not accounting for the possible sister intrusion. And it's not including Gracie. I mean, can you see the risk reward here? 182 million. I think it's closer to actually above 200 million. It's like, okay, balance of probabilities, uh, it appears we don't have the assays, but it's like we know they hit what kind of grades they got outside the intrusion in these holes and we know this now and we know that the, there's wanes way uh, uh well not in that picture there's still some veining here outside outside the intrusion veining here it kicks uh, you know starts to have more veins when it gets into the intrusion so i mean this whole thing might be mineralized like quinton has said so it's like, I have no idea who the hell reads this news release <coughs> and starts selling <laughs> at this market cap. But again, that's why I love this market. It's like, Jesus Christ. You really, I mean, it, it basically went down. I think it, the lowest point, it was down 8% and ended up, I think, at a new uh, uh, all-time high for a close. It's just incredible. I mean, I was buying all day. Uh, yeah, uh, but just my opinions. Uh, many of the companies I mentioned are sponsors. I own shares of all of them. Uh, don't invest money you cannot afford to lose. I don't share your profits or your losses. Uh, yeah, hit the like button if you like this stuff. And, and if you have any questions, uh, post a comment. Uh, thanks for listening. Bye.